All right, in this video, we're going to talk about conformational isomers. Conformational isomers are also called conformers or rotomers. They are another type of diastereomer, meaning that they are stereoisomers that differ in the spatial arrangement of their atoms. In this case, conformational isomers, they differ in spatial arrangement of atoms by rotation about a single bond. Now, if you recall, there is free rotation about single bonds. So here, when we're talking about conformational isomers, we're talking about very temporary differences. So it's to say that if you have one isomer, when its bond rotates, you now have a different conformational isomer. But a moment later, it's gonna rotate again to form a different conformational isomer. So the main thing to understand here is that conformational isomers are really just identical molecules in different states. But since they are identical molecules, they cannot be isolated. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example molecule. In this case, we can go ahead and consider butane. So butane, here I'm gonna draw in the groups. We have a four carbon chain for butane and the rest of these substituents are hydrogen atoms. Now, when we're looking at conformational isomers, we're gonna be talking about a special way of viewing molecules called Newman projections. Newman projections is a way of visualizing molecules from an angle. And here, the specific angle is viewing the two atoms here that are rotating we're gonna be viewing it from the side. So here I can basically draw an eye and we're viewing this molecule from the left side. When you're viewing from the left side, the first thing that the eye is gonna see is this central carbon atom. That counts as this carbon atom right here. Behind this carbon atom is another carbon atom. This carbon atom in the back is denoted by this big circle. So if we look at the carbon atom in the front with this dot, we can see there's a methyl group that is pointed straight up, and there are hydrogen atoms facing the bottom left and the bottom right. So essentially here, with our Newman projection, we're pointing and looking at what are the atoms, what are the substituents connected to this first carbon atom that we see. We can then take a look at the carbon atom in the back, the large circle, and look at what, is, what are the substituents attached to this atom in the back. And what you can see is that there is a methyl group that is facing down and hydrogen groups facing the top left and the top right. So this is just another way of visualizing this molecule. Now, since this is just the same molecule, we haven't actually looked at any conformational isomers. So to look at a conformational isomer, we need to do a rotation about the spawn. And here, we're going to go ahead and do a 60 degrees rotation. And what we're going to do is we're gonna hold the atom on the left in place. So that means here, the methyl group is still facing up and the hydrogen is still facing the bottom left and bottom right. But here, we're gonna take this atom and we're going to rotate it 60 degrees. And when we rotate it, the methyl group, instead of being in the plane of the wedge, coming out of the page, and then the hydrogens will occupy the remaining spots. Again, we can draw a Newman projection. Now we're gonna take the same view, viewing the molecule from the left. So if you were to be in the plane of the page and stare down the molecule in this direction, again, this carbon that we see is this vertex, and it hasn't changed, so you still have the methyl group facing up, the hydrogen in either direction. When you now look at the carbon in the back, denoted by the large circle, you're gonna see that all the groups basically are stacked on top of each other. So behind the methyl group, you can see a hydrogen right behind it. Behind the hydrogen on the left, you have another hydrogen, and behind the hydrogen on the bottom right, you have the methyl group. You can then repeat this a couple more times. So let's say we go ahead and do another 60 degrees rotation. Again, we're gonna keep the atom on the left unchanged, so we still have the methyl group on the top, the hydrogens. Now when we do the rotation, the methyl group will now get rotated to the top, so it's a wedge coming out of the page facing up. 
And when we look at the Newman projection, again, we're going to be viewing from the same exact angle. So atom in the front is unchanged. You've got the methyl group, the two hydrogens. But now the methyl group and the carbon in the back is facing the top and towards the right. And you have the hydrogens in the other two positions. So let's do this one last time. One more 60 degrees rotation. So in total, we've done 180 degrees. So when you do 180 degrees rotation, now you're going to have the methyl group facing the top on both atoms. And again, we can go ahead and draw the Newman projection viewing this molecule from the side. And the atom in the front, we're still not changing. But now we can see the groups are basically stacked on top of each other again when we're viewing from the side. And we would get a Newman projection that looks like this. So through this exercise, we now have an understanding of how to draw Newman projections. And if you look at these Newman projections, you can see how the atoms are oriented differently in space. Basically just taking the atom in the back and we're simply just rotating it counterclockwise by 60 degrees each time so you can look at the position of the methyl group gradually move 60 degrees with each rotation. Now, as it turns out, these conformational isomers are not equal. Some isomers are more stable, some isomers are less stable. And this is all based on the relative orientation of the substituents. And the substituents you always want to pay the most attention to are the largest substituents. That's because the largest substituents have the largest electron clouds. And when you have two large substituents close to each other, it's possible for their electron clouds to overlap. And since we know electrons are all negatively charged, they repel each other. So to have electron clouds from large substituents overlap is an unfavorable interaction. And they, we call them steric interactions which sometimes you've heard this, you know, refer to as steric hindrance. It's the same idea. So if we look at these different conformations that we've drawn here, we can take note that there are definitely a couple conformations where there's more steric hindrance than the other two. In particular, if you take a look at these two conformations, you can see that the groups are basically stacked right on top of each other in the conformations. These conformations are called the eclipsed conformation. And the eclipsed conformation is higher in energy and less stable than these two configurations over here. In these two configurations, none of the groups are stacked on top of each other. They are staggered. So that's the terminology that we use here. Now, we can actually further categorize each of these two configurations because even the two eclipsed or the two staggered configurations are not equal in energy. For instance, if we take a look at the two eclipsed conformations, we can see that one of them is less stable than the other. And that is this one right here. And you know it's this configuration that's less stable because the two largest substituents are eclipsed on top of each other. In this eclipse conformation, the two methyl groups, the two largest groups, are eclipsed, but not with each other, with hydrogen atoms that are much smaller. So this is the highest in energy and the least stable, and we have a term for this, that when we look at lines in organic molecules, it means they're in the same plane. And when we're looking at these four atoms in the same plane, we can see the methyl groups are facing the same side. That's what we often called sin periplanar. So this is not just eclipsed, this is eclipsed sin periplanar, or sometimes it's simply just called sin eclipsed. Similarly, if we want to take a look at the two staggered configurations, we can again look at the large substituents on each. So if we look at the two largest substituents, the two methyl groups, here, they're closer together. So there's a little bit of steric hindrance. And here, the two largest groups are as far apart from each other as they possibly can be. So this is the most stable configuration. 
And here, you also note that if you take a look at the four atoms in the same plane, they are in opposite locations. So this is what we call anti-periplanar. So this configuration you can call it staggered anti-periplanar. Or many people will just call it staggered anti. And over here, this is also staggered, and we have a term for this as well. This is staggered gauche. So finally, if we wanted to summarize these, looking at the stabilities of the molecules, we can go ahead and draw an energy diagram right here. And if we wanted to go ahead and number these molecules, we can call, you know, just go from left to right. This can be number one, this can be number two, number three, and number four. The highest in energy is number four, followed by number two, then number three, and then number one.